Okay, welcome back. Welcome to the JavaScript exercise, the last of the exercises. And in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to progressively enhance a page using JavaScript, um, using some of the techniques that we talked about in the JavaScript presentation. Um, so let's get started. In the web dev course folder, uh, inside the exercises directory, we're going to be dealing with JavaScript exercise unfinished. Um, and so we just open that up in a browser, what we see is basically uh, just our um, three boxes here. Each one's got a header and some contents. And what we want to do is make it so that when we click the header, uh, the content gets toggled between being hidden and being shown. And this is basically just the same as that demo page. So if we open up the demo page and look at these quick links boxes, uh, we can see that this is the behavior that we want to create in our exercise file. So we'll go back to that and let's open it up in a text editor as well. So I'll open it up in TextMate here um, and we can see what we've got. So we've got a basic HTML structure. We've got uh, some CSS already included here from the demos directory, expandos.css. That's just to give us those styles. And then we've got a pretty basic markup structure. We've got three divs on the page, each one with a class of WD Expando. And WD dash, again, is just our namespace for web developer to make sure that our class names don't clash with anyone else's. Um, then inside of each of those divs, we have a header, an H2 with a title, and then an ordered list with some list items inside. So pretty simple. Uh, then down at the bottom, we have a script tag. We have some JavaScript included. So we've got uh, utility.js external JavaScript file included from the utilities directory. And then we've got another script tag here, inline script, uh, inline JavaScript for us to do um, the JavaScript that we're going to write for this exercise. And in this comment here at the top, it tells us what's included in the utility.js file. And that's basically just all the methods that we uh, talked about um, all the functions that we talked about during the presentation, those convenience functions um, that libraries provide. So we've got add event <coughs> for doing attaching event listeners to elements. We've got had cl has class, add class, and remove class for doing class name management. And we've also got get elements by class, which is a function that just returns all the elements on the page with a given class name. Um, all right, and then down here you can see we've got um, a little skeleton of JavaScript set up to get us started. So we've got uh, get elements by class, returning everything with the class wd-expando and assigning it to the variable expandos. Then we've got a for loop that loops through that array and assigns each individual uh, item to the variable expando. And we're going to do something here. And then down here at the bottom, we've got a function waiting for us called toggle expando, which doesn't do anything yet. So to start, um, we want to start small and not, you know, it's kind of overwhelming the task a little bit, but uh, we want to just start small and do make little changes and make sure that everything is working as we expect. That's the best way to do JavaScript in the browser is just to test constantly. Um, so uh, we're going to start by just using alert, which is a special browser uh, function that just pops up a JavaScript alert. And we're going to alert whatever is in these expando variables for each of the for loops. And that's going to execute right once the browser reaches the bottom of the page. So it should execute on page load. So we'll save that. We'll go over here and we'll refresh. And OK, we can see right away on page load it executed. We've got one HTML div element, two HTML div elements, and three HTML div elements. I feel like the count. Um, let's see, do we have any more? No. Okay. So that's good. So we have a reference to each of those three divs, each of those three division tags that make up those three expandos on the page. So that's good, but um, we actually don't want anything to happen on page load. What we want <coughs> is to use, uh, we want something to happen when we click, right? Um, and so to do that, we need to use an event listener. We need to attach an event listener like we talked about in the presentation. So we do that using our add event function. It's a handy function that hides all of the ugliness of Internet Explorer away from us. Um, and we're just going to add an event to the expando. Let's just start with the expando because it's easy. 
we're going to on click we want to execute a function and handily enough we have our toggle expando function down here so we'll just use that as our event listener okay and then in toggle expando we'll need to do something as well so let's just alert again and we'll alert this which if you remember is just that special JavaScript keyword that refers to whatever object is currently the scope so um, we'll go ahead and save that go over here and refresh good nothing happens on page load all we did was attach the event listeners silently and then not do anything and you can see if we click on one of these we get HTML div element okay so <clears throat> we've attached the listener to the div and clicking makes it work and we get our alert so that's good um, one problem actually is that we attach the event listener to the div so clicking anywhere even clicking inside the list makes the div makes the alert pop up it fires the event listener so we don't want any click on the div to fire it we just want what the header right so we're gonna have to go back and make a small change instead of attaching the event to expando we want to go ahead and attach the event to the h2 tag so how would, get, how would we get a reference to the h2 when we have a reference to the expando? We'll go back up here to look at our markup. The WD expando class is on the div, so we get a reference to that div. We want to get a reference to h2. Okay, any ideas? Do I hear first child? Okay, first child. Let's try that. So we'll do expando.firstchild which is one of those node properties and then we'll attach the event to our h2 okay and we'll still alert this in our in our event listener that's fine so we'll go over here and we'll refresh we'll click on a header and nothing happens darn well what's going on shouldn't the shouldn't the first child work well <clears throat> if you look at our markup the interesting thing is the W3C spec says that this white space between the div and h2 actually is a node that's a white space node. So the first child of the div is a white space node, um, which you know you don't you don't want to attach your event to the white space node. You want to attach it to this h2. So we could do first child next sibling, but then if we have additional white space or some characters or the h2 gets moved below the ol. Um, it's going to break again, right? So that's sort of fragile. We want to see if we can come up with a way that's a little bit more robust. So let's not do that after all. Let's not use first child. Any other ideas? We remember we had some getter methods that we learned about in the uh, presentation. One of them was um, get elements by tag name, right? So if we get all the elements by tag name just within that expando, because um, it's a node, pro a node method, if we get all the ones that are h2 tags, and we just get the first one, because that's going to return to us a, a node list, and we just want the first one. So we'll just get uh, index 0. That's the very first. And um, so if we do that, that should be a reference to our h2, and that should actually work. So let's go ahead and refresh again and try that. So we click. Awesome, and we have a reference to our HTML heading element, and that works on all three of them. And if we click on the list now, nothing happens because the event listener is now just attached to the header element. Great, so that is getting much better already. Now, uh, let's do something more useful than just alerting uh, this. Let's do something else with this. What are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to hide, um, we're trying to hide something, right? So let's just go ahead and start simple and say this.style.display equals none. So we'll hide it when it's clicked. Save that. We'll go back, refresh the page, and we'll click something. Cool. Okay, so this is a reference to our headers, right? Not to the list body, which is what we want to hide. So we're hiding the wrong thing, and there's no way to bring them back. I guess we could refresh the page. We could just tell our users to refresh the page, um, and that would be good enough, uh, but maybe not. All right. Okay, so we don't want to hide this. This refers to our h2. What we want to hide is the ol, right? 
So, how do we get a reference to the OL when we have a reference to H2? Maybe <coughs> H2.next sibling would work. Well, we're going to run into the same problem that we ran into with first child. The next sibling of our H2 is this white space node before OL. So that's not really what we want to do. What we actually want to do is the same approach that we used last time. So how could we use get elements by tag name? Well, OL doesn't contain the H2, so that won't work directly. But if we get a reference to the H2's parent node, and that will definitely always work, the parent node of the H2 is always the div, then we can do get elements, elements by tag name again. Um, and we can do our OL instead of our H2, and we want the first one of those. So that should refer to the ordered list. Now instead of high styling the H2, oh yeah, we want this to be this, not H2. There we go. Now I'll set the OL style display to none. So we'll save that, we'll go refresh again, and we'll try it again. Ooh, awesome. Sweet, so we're hiding the right thing. Now the problem is just that there's no way to bring them back, right? So we want to do some sort of a toggle. Instead of always setting display to none, we want to like check what the display is first, and then do an if, a conditional statement probably. Um, <clears throat> but let's time out for a second and look at what we're doing. We are, once again, we're setting the style in JavaScript, right? And this is something that we talked about earlier. We want to separate each of these three things um, and just use them to do their job. So we shouldn't be using any style information in our JavaScript because now if someone wants to change you know, what happens um, when these are clicked, they're going to have to, what the visual representation of is changes when these are clicked, they're going to have to go in and mess with JavaScript and we don't want to have to do that. So if we see up here in the comment, uh, the, our designer has helpfully added some CSS classes for us that he thinks we might need. There in expandos.css, he's defined a uh, class wd-expando-on and wd-expando-off. And these are meant to be applied to our divs when the expando is either on or off. And that class name will take care of all of the visual changes that the designer wants to make. And so if we go into our demos directory and look at expandos.css, we'll see that we have you know, wd-expando on and off, we adds a pointer cursor to the header. Um, it gives some additional padding and adds a background image to suggest uh, that it's interactive now. We also see that it, uh, when it's off, it hides the OL. Um, and so all of this stuff is happening in the CSS where it should happen because it's presentation. And we're just using the class name as like a shared signal between the JavaScript and the CSS. So that's much nicer. So let's do that instead. So let's get rid of all the stuff we've done here. We'll get rid of our toggle expando. We'll get rid of our h2. Well, no, we want to keep our h2, right? We want to attach this event to the h2 still. So whenever the header is clicked, what do we want to happen? Well, the first thing we need to happen is that right at the beginning, we need to add the wd-expando-on class to the expando, right? So we'll use add class. We'll use our class management functions. We'll add class. Uh, we need to add to the expando. We'll add the class wd-expando-on. So that'll by default turn all the expandos on. <clears throat> and if we go and refresh the page, we can see that by default they're all turned on and now we have this nice pointer style. We have this nice background image that suggests that it's interactive. So we get a lot of things for free because our designer wrote this nice CSS for us just by applying that class name. Then <clears throat> in Toggle Expando, instead of doing things to the ordered list, what we're going to do is we're just going to change the class on the div from on to off and then from off to on using those three uh, class management functions. So what we'll do is we'll just get a reference to the div and that's going to be this is the header. So this dot parent node is going to be a reference to the div because the div is the parent of the h2 up here. Okay, so we got a reference to the div. Now we're going to say if has class, if the div has the class wd-expando-on, then what we want to do is remove the class from the div 
wd dash expando whoops expando dash on and we want to add the class um, whoops wd dash expando dash off so we're just going to swap classes otherwise we can assume that it's off and so we can just flip these around we'll just paste these down here and do we'll off, we'll remove off and we'll add on okay does that make sense? so all we're doing is we're swapping those class names around and we're letting the CSS do all the work so if we refresh our page now we can see that we've still got these nice styles if we click cool not only does the OL hide and, sh and show because of the CSS but our background image that's right there also changes uh, back and forth between a plus and a minus so that's really cool <clears throat> and the really great thing about this is that now if the designer wants to change his mind and decide that you know when that's clicked instead of hiding the OL what we're gonna do is we're set we're just gonna set visibility to hidden because I want to save the space I don't want stuff shifting around on the page then the um, our designer can go and change that in the CSS we don't change anything in the JavaScript and if we go over here and refresh our page and click again now we can see that the behavior is different and that's really cool and if our developer goes insane and decides that he's actually gonna change the font size to be 50 percent and change the color to be red <clears throat> then he can do that and everything will still work just fine because we've separated our behavior from our presentation using class names as a shared signal and that is the way that you keep JavaScript separate from presentation and from content so um, I hope that made sense if you want to play around with this more and try changing some additional stuff uh, feel free to do that um, you can look into the utility.js file if you're curious about how those uh, how those helper functions work and uh, thanks a lot now we'll uh, conclude and wrap up